the 2021 Acer Nitro 5 is one of the best Nitro laptops of the series due to its improved thermals and an overall simpler design aside from the latest gen specs. It's the only gaming laptop in this price range which comes with a Thunderbolt port. For the initial price of 69000 which has fluctuated quite a lot since I started working on this video, it's a really solid product because you're getting a Core i5 plus RTX 3050 combo which is almost top tier for this segment along with the flexibility of a Thunderbolt port which enables you to hook up a shitload of peripherals with a dock, even an external GPU. So you're just one external monitor away from turning this laptop into a full blown workstation. So if you're eyeing for a great laptop in this budget or you've already set your eyes on this one here's everything you would want to know about the acer nitro 5 2021 the design is slightly improved over the previous years and it has gone from looking hideous to quite good i've never been a fan of disturbing color schemes and fortunately the 2021 model has dialed it down a bit. It has minimal red color grills, it looks sober and sleek and you can take it out without embarrassing yourself in front of others. No red lines around the trackpad, sleek edges and stealthy looking back panel makes this the sexiest looking Nitro 5 laptop of the series. Still not anywhere close to the Legion 5 though, deal with it. The keyboard has 4 zone addressable RGB control through the NitroSense software and offers the same old great typing experience. The trackpad is also the same old plastic one with its big surface area and great accuracy. So nothing to complain here. Port distribution has remained the same with an Ethernet port, two Type-A USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and an audio jack on the left and on the right an HDMI 2.1 port, one Type-A USB 3.2 Gen 2 port which supports always on phone charging and a Type-C USB 3.2 Gen 2 port with the support for DisplayPort and USB charging along with Thunderbolt 4. Here's a comparison between between Gen 1 and Gen 2. On the back there are two exhaust vents and the power input in the middle, same as the 2020 model. However, you still need to slam the power plug until you hear. <sighs> The screen is the same 1080p 144Hz IPS panel with the standard 67% sRGB color gamut and 270 nits of peak brightness which is really great for indoor uses like gaming and light content creation. The CPU is an 11th gen core i5 11400H which is a 6 core 12 thread CPU unlike the 11300H which is a quad core. And the GPU here is a 4GB RTX 3050 configured with a 75W TGP. So the gaming performance is going to be just like other laptops with similar specs. However, the Ryzen 5 version of Nitro 5 is slightly faster and power efficient in gaming than this one, mainly due to its 7 nanometer process. Acer put a lot of thought into durability of this laptop because you get monster upgradability. Accessing the internals is easy, you get two M.2 slots one SATA 3 slot for a 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD and a maximum of up to 32 gigabytes of RAM in dual channel. There's also a swappable killer Wi-Fi 6 card. Our model comes with one 8 gigabyte stick of 3200 MHz RAM and a combo of one 256 GB M.2 NVMe SSD and a one terabyte hard drive. But due to this extra hard drive slot, the space for the battery is quite small. So you only get a 57 watt hour battery which is is not good enough for a laptop like this. Gaming performance and thermals are just great. It doesn't even feel like you're playing on an Acer Nitro. In fact, it's so good that Nitro Sense finally makes sense now. I'll do a separate video comparing the gaming performance of this with the Ryzen 5 version of Nitro 5 sometime later in the future. So just like any other budget laptop, something's gotta be wrong with this one too, right? Well, here are a few things that I didn't really like. The Type-C port has DisplayPort support, but it's connected through the iGPU. So the only way you're bypassing the iGPU to get some extra frames is through the HDMI port. It's also the only way to bypass Nvidia Optimus because this laptop does not have a MUX switch. And lastly, just 57 watt hours of battery is another unsettling thing about this laptop. But there are some positives as well. As we talked earlier, this is perhaps the only laptop in this price range that offers the flexibility of a Thunderbolt 4 port. If you're a content creator or a professional video editor who relies on fast data transfers and multi-monitor setups, then you can truly appreciate the level of flexibility that having a Thunderbolt port offers, especially in this budget. Also, 
This laptop has the best thermals in a Nitro laptop, which puts it among the likes of Lenovo Legion and the new Dell G15. And above all, it is the excellent value that this laptop offers that makes it the best choice for a lot of people. As far as pricing goes, it can be hard to find the Thunderbolt 4 version and very easy to fall for the non-Thunderbolt version because their listings are almost identical. But for your convenience, I put the links for both the laptops in the description. And one more thing to remember, the price of the Thunderbolt 4 version fluctuates a lot. So keep that in mind when you're about to pull the trigger because it may become drastically cheap the day after you paid like 75,000 for it. But the minimum price is 69,000. And you can also check for the pricing in the offline market just to be sure. I hope all your questions are answered. If not, just let me know. Finish him.